Doom, it's undoubtedly one of the most influential games in history, immensely popularizing the first person genre. In this series, we will attempt to recreate a graphics engine for the classic Doom. Now, the original Doom engine used a concept known as binary space partitioning to create all of the levels and render them, while some later games such as Duke Nukem 3D used a portal based rendering technique. However, we are going to do something completely different. We are going to use fully 3D OpenGL. Which means that we load a standard Doom WAD file and convert that into a number of OpenGL meshes that we can then draw using the graphics card. Now we are going to create everything from scratch in the C programming language which means that uh, we will need to set up a lot of the things that we usually take for granted ourselves. So the first thing we will set up in this video is a basic framework for rendering different kinds of shapes and uh, basically implementing a basic 2D renderer in our engine which we will use later on when we are uh, drawing different stuff. So in this video we are gonna just start with a basic 2D render and not actually load any WAD maps but uh, we'll have basically the framework for our application ready in this video. So without further ado let's jump right into it. Now fair warning before we start since this is kind of the boring part of the engine I'm gonna skim over this pretty quickly and uh, I assume you already have some knowledge about OpenGL. If you're completely new to OpenGL you can check out my other OpenGL series in which I show how to use OpenGL like for a complete beginner and uh, some knowledge of GLFW the windowing framework that we are gonna use it will also help however you don't necessarily need to be an expert at it since the code is gonna be pretty easy to understand. So now we can finally get started. So I'm gonna open up a main file in Vim and I'm gonna include the necessary GLFW and standard input output headers. We are gonna define a width and a height of our screen and then we are gonna create a main function. Now inside of this function we are gonna uh, first of all initialize GLFW. If that uh, is not true which means it failed we are gonna give the user an error message. And then we are going to go down here and uh, call glfw window hint to set a bunch of uh, options for our window. We'll set the OpenGL version to be the modern 3.3 version and set the profile to be the only modern core profile of OpenGL. And then we'll set our window to be not resizable and we are going to create a window by calling the glfw create window function with the appropriate width, height, title and everything. And then we are going to run a while loop while our window should not close. We are going to keep running this loop and uh, inside of this loop we are going to pull the events so that we process all of the events. Then we are going to swap the buffers. In the end we are going to call glfw terminate. Now since we are using modern OpenGL we will need to load all of the modern OpenGL functions using a library like glad or glio. For this tutorial I am going to use glio. So for that before we include glfw we are going to include gl slash glue.h and then we are going to make the OpenGL context of this window current and then we are gonna initialize our glue check if it's okay if it's not then we are gonna give an error message similar to the one we gave earlier and we are gonna return with an error code and similarly when glfw fails we are gonna return with an error code as well. So if I were to go ahead and run this right now you should see that we get an empty window that we can move around and uh, everything works like expected. So now in order to add frame rate to our game we are going to create a last true which will represent the last time it will be a float by default it's going to be zero. We are going to set now to the current time and then we are going to create delta by subtracting now from last and then we are going to set last to be now and we are going to create a character call, array called title which is so that we can display the frame rate in the title and we are going to use snprintf to print the actual frame rate to the string and we are going to print it as a whole actually uh, we need to use one by delta for printing that and we are going to print it as a whole number and in the end we are going to set the window title by using glfw set window title so now i'm going to run that and you can see we get a frame rate displayed here which is approximately 60 because uh, uh, vertical sync is enabled by default and that is the behavior we want so yeah that's perfect for that i'm going to create a new file called render.h and in here we are going to add a standard include guard to so prevent multiple inclusion and uh, we are going to define all of our render functions in here so first of all it's going to be render in it taking the dimensions of the window and the second function is going to be render clear which will clear the window every frame now in render.c we are going to include render.h of course and we are going to define that render init function. We will name the parameters w and h because width and height are going to be the uh, representing the global state of the render and these are going to be floats and static to prevent them from being accessed from outside. We are going to initialize these variables correctly in the init function then we are going to implement the clear function here which is just called the gl clear function with the color buffer bit and in here we will call gl clear color with the correct color which is we are going to just uh, set white for testing.
going in main.c i am going to create call render in it with the correct width and the correct height and then after polling the events before swapping buffers we are going to call render clear and running that reveals that we get a white window now i'll change the white color to a more uh, grayish kind of color and if i run this you can see everything works perfectly now since we are using modern opengl it means everything will be rendered with shaders so we are quickly going to add this simple shader into our program here we are going to just paste the source code in the program directly and it's a pretty basic shader with the, the stuff you'd expect it's um, basically a 2d shader with the, uh, which will just uh, render stuff with a single color now we'll create a file called glhelpers.h to help us in uh, you know basic opengl functions uh, and in here we'll define a we'll first of all include the correct headers we are going to include clio.h along with the standard definition header file and in here we are going to create a function that will run an OpenGL unsigned integer called compile shader that will compile a shader with the type and the uh, uh, source code provided. And the other function is going to be link shader and will take the number of shaders and then it will be a variadic argument list to allow any number of shaders to be linked. And we are going to create GL helpers.c include the header file and I'm going to just copy all of this and paste it here. And we are going to uh, go under the compile shader and we are going to create a GL unit called shader, which is we, we are just going to use GL create shader to do that and we are going to return this shader. Now we can provide the shader with the source code by shading shader and we have got only one source code and the last argument is unused. And uh, then we can call compile shader to actually compile this. Now in order to check for compilation status, we will create an integer success and use get shader iv to get the shader's compilation status. If that was not successful, which means the compilation failed, then we will get the actual errors by using an info log. So we will use get, gl get shader info log to get this info log and uh, then we are going to pass it in the appropriate parameters and actually this needs to be reversed null here and uh, info log here. Maximum size is going to be 512 and we are going to just uh, put that out as an error saying that failed to compile shader and then we are going to uh, output the whole info log as well and we can just uh, go here and uh, put a string after that and we can pass the info log here uh, and it included the wrong header we are going to uh, include stdio.h not the c++ header and uh, here we are also going to include stdr.h to work with variable argument list and in here we are going to create a gl unit program which is we are going to set to gl create program and then we are going to return program here then we are going to create a variable argument list which will just call va actually and then we'll call va begin with the last argument and the list so we'll pass it on last argument which is the number of shaders and then we'll go for each of the shaders we'll just run a for loop and we are going to attach those shaders to this program so for that we are going to use the uh, gl uh, attach i think yeah gl attach shader function and in here we are going to pass in our program and for the shader we are going to use va arc to get the correct argument and we are going to pass it our list and the type is going to be glu int because that's what shaders are and then we are going to in the end and this via list so with that we are going to go here and use gl link program to link this and as far as the error detection code is concerned we are going to just copy it over and we are going to change the get shader iv to get program iv and so that we actually check for this and uh, we are going to change compile status to link status and uh, when we are getting the info log we are going to use gl get program info log and pass our program here and we are going to say fail to link shader program in the error and i just realized it would make more sense to call this link program instead of link shader and we are going to change it in gl helpers.h as well change it to link program and now going under render.c i'm going to go ahead and include the gl helpers.h header file and we are going to uh, go ahead and move these variables down here and we are going to define a function with internal linkage which will be because you know we like to keep our code organized i'm going to define a function up here called init shader uh, actually just in a shader because there is only one shader and then we are going to implement it down here and in the implementation uh, we are going to say G we are going to create two gl unit one is going to be the vertex shader we will just use compile shader the function we just created to get that so we'll pass it gl vertex shader as the type and we'll pass in the source code of our vertex shader and then for fragment we'll do a uh, similar thing except that we'll use the gl fragment shader type and for the source we'll use the fragment shader source in the end we can we, uh, we need to access the shader again so we'll need to create a gl unit here called program that would be like a global variable and we'll set this program to be li uh, we'll use our uh, link program function with two shaders one is going to be the vertex and one is going to be the fragment and uh, yeah that's going to uh, get the shaders initialized correctly
Now for actually rendering different things on a graphics card, we are going to use a single like uh, quad to do that. So it basically will be a scare and then we'll transform it, rotate it and scale it in different ways to make the kind of shapes we want. So first of all, we need to set up a quad on the GPU. For that, we'll create another internal function called init quad and we'll just implement it at the end of the file. And this is going to basically do all of the initialization quad stuff here for us. And first thing we'll need to do is create a array of plots called vertices. After that, we'll fill this with all of the points of the quad. First of all, we'll begin with top right and then we'll add uh, the bottom right point. And as you can see with the way we are arranging these, our quad will basically have the origin at 0, 0 and uh, uh, you know, at the origin 0, 0 will be at center and the quad will be exactly one unit in width, like uh, height and length, everything. So we are going to create an array of unsigned integers called indices, which we will set to, uh, we'll basically, you know, make it so that we've got two triangles here, the first and the second triangle, which will make up our quad. And we'll set up the array like that. And uh, uh, this actually needs to be an array, not a static thing. And that works. So we just go ahead and create three GL unsigned integers, one for the vertex array object, the vertex buffer object, and vertex uh, element buffer object, and we just generate these threes with uh, uh, only, uh, you know, GL gen generate buffer, then generate vertex array, we generate the appropriate stuff, and then we go ahead and bind the vertex array, and then we tell it what argument, uh, you know, what data, the uh, attributes of the data in our array, and then we tell it that and open GL um, for index zero, we have got a, uh, we have only got like two attributes, one is one attribute actually with the t uh, a size of two floats, which is basically the X and Y coordinate of the position and in the end the offset is going to be zero. And then we enable this vertex array. All right, so after that, we just bind the buffer, which is the uh, array buffer, which uh, we created in our VPO. And we tell it, the, um, basically pass the our vertices data to this buffer. So we pass it GL array buffer, and uh, we pass it the size of our vertices and the uh, actual vertices array. And we also tell it that uh, we are only going to be setting this once by telling it uh, to use GL static draw and we basically copy this and do a similar thing for the EBO except that this time we use the GL element array buffer instead of just array buffer and we specify our EBO of course and we specify the indices as the actual data and yeah that will initialize all of the data and stuff correctly now we'll unbind our vertex buffer object but since the other ones need to be bound and we only have one object in the scene we can just let them remain bound so uh, we'll uh, unbind the VBO but our VO and EBO will remain bound Alright guys, so this is going to be pretty much it for this video and we still didn't get anything on the screen but for that we'll need to delve into some vector and uh, matrix mathematics which we'll do in the next video so in the next video our render is gonna be finished but uh, as far as this video is concerned I don't wanna make it too long so yeah, this is pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it and share this video with other people as well and bye.